Hi everybody, uh, welcome to another week of class. Uh, this, uh, we've covered uh, the basics of formatting a document and putting one together, and now we're just going to get into some of the more interesting features of Microsoft Word. Uh, this week we're going to be talking about Quick Parts, which is a feature that includes auto text. Think of Quick Parts as a toolbox that stores reusable content and document properties and document fields. Uh, the benefit of Quick Parts is that they allow you to streamline document content can be carried over from project to project. So if you're doing something where uh, you might need to include some sort of boilerplate signature or a boilerplate um, disclaimer or warning, um, you know, uh, that's the kind of thing you might use these for in a professional setting. Uh, so the way to access Quick Parts is to uh, hit the Insert tab. It's going to take a minute because it's a... Insert. Okay, there we go. Um, and then we go over to the uh, the text field. Um, uh, there it is, Quick Parts. Okay, so um, this does look different. It's it's pretty much the same between 2010 and 2013, um, but it is a it's a little uh, less easy to see in 2013. But so here we've got this this text box in the insert ribbon. Um, and then up uh, in the middle column on the top is this Explore Quick Parts button. So you can see I've already got some just sort of preformatted text uh, stuff here. Uh, since auto text is the most common feature in Quick Parts, let's start with that. Uh, auto, con auto text is uh, content you can save to use over and over. Um, it's great. Um, one, it's really efficient. Uh, one of the things I noticed is that if uh, you have 2010 and then you uh, transfer to 2013, um, it'll keep those auto texts. This is these are all these presets here. These sort of test ones are ones I recorded when I did all my 2010 tutorials last year, and uh, it kept them across versions. I didn't have to you know redo my tutorials, which was uh, or I didn't have to redo any of that, which is really nice. Um, so uh, again, you can see I've just got a couple of presets. They're not anything special. They're just for the purposes of demos. Um, now to save something into auto text, you just need uh, some text of some kind. So here we've got our little uh, meat filler. <laughs> um, so after you've typed the text you want to use, highlight it, uh, go to the auto text section of quick parts, and uh, click save selection to auto text gallery. So, and then we've got a name. It tells us which gallery to put it in. Uh, there are different. We'll get to galleries in a second. Category. Uh, you can have a general category, or you can create a new category. So, I'm going to create a new category today. You can just keep it as general. It just sort of depends what you're using it for. Um, but for the category, we'll call it class demo, since that's what I'm using this for. Um, save in. Okay. Um, Saving in, that can be uh, pretty important. Um, I recommend saving in normal. Um, that um, So that means that it'll, it'll carry on throughout other documents and other versions of the software. So save in normal. Um, and then you can preset options. So you can just insert content only, or you can have it insert um, as its own paragraph or on its own separate page. Uh, normally I just have it set to insert content only, but um, you can also set it up this way. Um, so then you can go in into your auto text, and here we have we have the general one where I just threw in a couple versions of my name, and then we have this special class demo where I uh, you know the the one I just made. So uh, that's pretty useful. And if I want to go. Um, just to note that when you type a word that has been saved in auto text, if you type it, Word might try to automatically fill in the rest of the text. So if I start typing, um, actually I have that turned off on, oh, there it is. I thought I had it turned off. Um, so I started typing the word bacon. Now since I had that auto text that uh, started as bacon, now Word wants to actually put that whole saved chunk of text in, um, which you might not always want to do, but it has these instructions press enter to insert. So if I press enter, hey, there's my there's my text. Um, and um, but you know, keep in mind you might not always want to do that. Um, 
but you just don't hit enter, <laughs> basically. Uh, now the next thing we can do with quick parts is add specific document properties. So, um, things like insert the author, a company email, a company address, um, phone number, things like that. Um, Uh, so how basically how it works is that you set it up once and save it and then that will be um, added in. Now uh, the one drawback to the document properties is that they're not uh, especially mobile. Uh, they basically go wherever your cursor is, so you can't really like set them up to insert. You can't uh, preset them to insert in their own paragraph, <laughs> unfortunately, um, the way you can with auto text. Um, they can be moved, but again, that's not always super elegant. So think about where you want to position something before you drop it in. So um, again, see, so I dropped in company email. And that auto-corrected, uh, auto and I don't want that, but we can have that. You know, we're not going to worry about that now. So again, there's this automatic email address, um, which again, I can move it around. Um, but not super elegantly, um, kind of a pain, as you can see. So just make sure with the, the drawback to this is just have your cursor placed where you want it right away. Um, uh, that's the big takeaway there. <laughs> um, you can also Am I, um, when I set up auto text, I can save a selection. Um, again, um, so I just uh, let's see. Um, actually, that's not what I wanted to do. So uh, ignore that. <laughs> um, but so again, we have these these fields. They're easy to edit. Blah, blah, blah. Great. Um, in addition to saving um, things like auto text and document properties, uh, you can save things more generally into your quick parts gallery. So again, you can take some text. This is what I was trying to do before. I didn't do it quite right. Um, highlight some text you want. Um, save it. Highlight it. Um, going into, oh, save selection to quick quick part gallery. Um, this takes you um, to what's called a building block, um, which, um, again, it's, so quick parts and building blocks are kind of synonymous, um, or, or building blocks are these, uh, building blocks is like the general umbrella term, and then quick parts and auto text is, um, are, you know, sort of subcategories under that. But so we created this new building block. We're just saving it to the general quick parts gallery. Um, category general. Um, we'll just keep it general for now. We're going to save it within, um, this time we are going to save it uh, in uh, building blocks. And we're going to have it insert content only. And again, we can then see. So what we see up here is these three things. These are our general building things that are kept in building blocks, as opposed to auto text. Um, and again, we can just go and click on it, and there it is. Um, and it's stored right in your computer. Um, it's stored right there, so you you're always going to have access to it. Um, now, to, to be fair, it's not necessarily, um, what I want to keep in mind is, so, uh, this one, here, I'll, uh, this one that we had saved, I, if you noticed, I saved one to normal and one to, uh, building blocks. Uh, so one thing to keep in mind is anything that I save to building blocks, which is here, that's going to just pretty much be stuck, uh, to your computer and your computer alone. So, um... So if I take this, 
save it as a building block organizer, which I'll get to in a second. Um, but I save it to, to a quick part. Um, so if it's saved in building blocks, it's pretty much going to be in my personal building blocks in my personal uh, computer. So I won't be able to say I sent this document and uh, sent it somewhere else. They wouldn't be able to actually access that building block and document to put it into this document. Now if I save it to normal, that actually keeps it as part of the document itself. Um, so that is one that, you know, that if you emailed this to a colleague and they didn't have that saved, um, they could go, then, then this would show, this one would show up because I saved it as normal. So it's um, part of the document. But this one, which I just saved the quick parts, won't save um, or won't be able to be seen. Apologies for the dog. There is a cat outside. Uh, let's see if I can fix this. <laughs> Um, oops, no, that's not what I wanted. Uh, anyway, um, uh, so, um, just keep that in mind. Uh, if you have questions about the difference between saving to normal and saving to a template, um, please do email me, and I apologize for the working. Uh, this is a new software, and I'm getting used to it, and I don't know how to pause the recording. Uh, anyway, um, um, now that you have, so anyway, getting back to you know the subject at hand, we are we have this field option here. Um, um, I'm not actually. I just want to draw attention to it uh, to say I'm not going to get into it because. 99% of the time what it's used for is mail merge, and we're not covering mail merge in this class. Uh, this is a class, uh, you know, Word has mail merge features and that's great, but we're doing, um, this course is focused on how to design and publish a book and how not about how to do mail merge. Um, so, um, you know, if people really wanted to know how to do that, I could maybe do a bonus video later at, toward the end of the semester. Um, but again, this is not something relevant to the course material um, at hand. So, just so you know why I'm not covering it. Um, anyway, to wrap up, I do want to point out the building blocks organizer. Uh, so this basically is a list of all the different templates and quick parts um, at your disposal. disposal. Uh, and these are ones that are included in Word and ones that you've built yourself. So we can see my um, so we can see these first three are ones I have built myself. You can see um, what category they're in. Um, and we can see this because we can see here, so any category that says built in, that's something that's been built into Word and you didn't make um, for the most part. Um, and then any of these plain number ones um, and these simple ones um, or page X ones, um, these are uh, ones that are in Word. Disclaimers, confidential, urgent, these are in Word. Basically anything, um, the, if the category is one you made yourself, that's one you made yourself, and general ones are mostly ones that people do themselves. Um, but Word makes it pretty easy to see. Um, but what's cool about this uh, organizer is that so I can click on this works cited, um, built-in works cited, and see a preview of it. Um, so this is actually when we went over how to do an automated works cited a couple weeks ago, or last week. Um, this was a building block. You know what 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 we used was we used a building block. We just hadn't sort of seen behind the scenes of it yet. Um, so this is that works cited you put together right here. Um, I can get a preview of the. Uh, Bacon auto text I put together today. Um, you can get a preview of a mathematic equa mathematical equation that's built in. Um, and then you can go in and um, you can edit the properties of your building block. So you sa say you uh, saved some automatic text. Uh, say you say uh, did a generic uh, fine print uh, disclaimer that you put at the end of every document, and the terms have changed, and now you need to update that. Well, you can write a whole new one, or you can just go in and um, 
mess with it. Um, you can change the class, you can change the name, you can change the description, you can change whether it's saved to normal or saved just within building blocks. Um, and then, yeah, and then, hey, then you have it, um, you have it changed. And then now it, um, so I changed the name and I changed the category, so it's been moved, but there it is, right there, you can still see it. Um, so that's a way to go in, and if you find you need to change your automatic, um, your auto text or your quick parts in any way, that's the organizer where you go to do it. Um, so do play around with that. Um, We're going to just close uh, that. Um, now I also want to talk about managing word options just a little bit. Um, so so we're, um, we're in our document. Um, and now talk, when I'm talking about word options, I'm talking about things like autocorrect uh, and uh, certain types of formatting. So if you want to go and so things like, you notice when I um, typed my email address in here, it automatically corrected that to a capital A, which I didn't want. Um, but I just got this version of 2013, and so I haven't uh, set up those, uh, you know, what I want for those definitions. So uh, to get into um, our options from 2013, we go into, so we're in our document, we hit this blue file tab. Um, and then we go and select options. And there is a lot here. So general options. Um, things like previews and toolbars. Um, I personally don't mess with these uh, too much. But you can change your um, your background um, even. You could update the word looks in your computer if you if you think what is the default is boring. Um, display, you could actually have it set up to always show your formatting, all of your formatting marks. So those formatting marks when we uh, hit this button right here and all those formatting marks come up, you could actually have it say I would like to, to show all formatting marks all the time, or I would like to show spaces all the time, or tabs all the time. Um, things like that. Um, autocorrect op so going into proofing and then going into autocorrect options, um, we have um, a lot of different tabs within that. Um, so I um, try to turn mine off as much as possible. I do have it set to correct the um, Accidental usage of the caps lock key. Um, I, so and some of these I do actually recommend. Um, things like um, fractions, uh, which automatically lends the character, the double hyphen is the M dash, um, things like that. Um, uh, again, um, we have lots of different. Um, auto format as you type. Um, just play around with these. Um, and um, you can you, know, you can set them however you want. Some people like less automation, some people like more. Um, having it ignore internet and file addresses, uh, this would mean that it wouldn't automatically like create a hyperlink to your email address. Um, so, um, and they've done some really cool things. So ignore words in uppercase, and or wor in order ignore words that contain numbers. Uh, those are actually newer features, and they're pretty uh, pretty useful. Um, you can also de define how you want to um, handle your spelling and grammar check. Um, you can even have it set to critique your grammar and style. Uh, I find the grammar and style option to be really buggy, uh, <laughs> personally. Um, um, because it's it's you know it's a piece of software it can't necessarily critique the file. You know it says it is but it's different. Um, you can uh, add editing languages so um, Spanish. Um, I'm gonna add Spanish Mexico. I actually don't speak, but it's not and my keyboard is not enabled for it so it's not quite gonna work. Um, but you know if you have a keyboard enabled for that you can definitely uh, do that. Um, uh, and here are some more advanced formatting options like using click and drag, uh, how to follow a hyperlink, um, auto com uh, so remember when we were doing, when I was doing that auto text and it was starting to auto complete my word, 
uh, or autocomplete the phrase uh, based on the auto text type save. I could turn that off by unchecking this. Uh, pasting with it, pasting, copy and paste, this is really interesting. Um, this is really fun. So when you're pasting within a document or between documents, sometimes you'll have formatting errors that come up. Um, so the default for most of these is keeping the source formatting, except between documents, that usually, uh, that's using the destination styles, um, which is automatically taking uh, the um, document you're pasting into and applying those styles, um, which can work, but it can also actually cause some issues. So I actually like everything in, in source formatting, but again, this is all up to you. Uh, feel free to play with it, um, basically. And we're not really going to have homework on this, but I just want to be able to show you how to walk through some of these and just be able to play with them. Um, you can also customize. So this up here is called the ribbon with all these different tabs on it. You can you can customize uh, what's on here. So in theory, I could actually, <coughs> um, you know, I could get rid of the insert tab, um, uh, things like that. Um, I could get rid of the developer tab if I wanted to, uh, which I might. So, oh, you know, uh, things like that. Um, I could add things. So the home tab is selected right now. Well, I could add or remove. So in theory, I could, you know, uh, remove the bulleted lists if I really wanted to. Um, I like having them there, though. Uh, this up here in the upper left corner, that's the quick access toolbar. Um, you see I have some macros saved in here. We're going to actually be getting into that, I think, next week. Uh, but you can, so we've got, um, like, save in here, undo, redo. I've got macros I've made saved. Um, but again, you can customize this. Um, so um, things that you use really, so say there's something in references or page layout that you know you're going to use a lot. You don't have to, like, dig through it. You just want it up here. Uh, you could do that. So... Um, let me find one I think I actually use. <laughs> um, I'll do save as, because right now regular save is there, but save as isn't. And so I save as. Um, and I don't want it after all of my macros. I want to have it next to save. So I hit OK. Um, and I'm not going to restart it just now, because I don't want my line. But see, here's the save as that wasn't there before. Uh, so there's other stuff in there that you can play around with. Uh, feel free to do so. Um, again, I'm not really uh, concerned about grading you on that. I just wanted to let you know the option was available. So have a great week, and please let me know if you have questions about this stuff, because it can get uh, tricky. All right, thanks.